It's not magic or anything paranormal, but I know I undergo a molecular change when I slide into that seat. You're in control, my friend. You got your leather seats, tilt steering wheel, your odometer, your speed. Your car is ego. You are what you drive. You got your CD player, your automatic windows, locks, seat adjust. I love that car. And it loves me. <laughs> it's my dad's, but you just wait. Someday I'll own that cute little thing. And then I'll own the road. <laughs> Driving's okay. It's just okay. It can be fun, and it can be scary. There are two sides to it. The freedom and the reality. See, when you're driving, you make your own reality. I feel like I'm a taxi for everyone. See, at first I didn't mind, but then now that I have my license, of course my parents expect me to run errands, and I gotta pick up my brother and sister and take them places. And then my friends are always wanting rides. Well, the reality is the responsibility. When you get a handle on it, you can be okay. But there's a lot to learn that they don't teach you in driver's ed. Oh, I said to her, can you believe what he's actually wearing? And I looked at the game and he was sitting right next to her. I mean, I couldn't believe the nerve of her. Oh, they were so much fun. So as she looked at me and I said, have you seen this? Oh, beautiful and everything, and not like she has a chance. <laughs> I'm trying to put my makeup on here. Can't you see that? <laughs> all right, all right. Driving can have its not so great side. Yeah, there's other drivers, there's tailgaters, there's people eating people on their cell phones. People who weave in and out of traffic. People who don't signal. Oh, wow, that drives me crazy. There are many distractions. Many drivers who are impaired. Uh, they drink and they drive. They are so fabulous. At least they think they are. I've actually seen guys change their shirts while they're driving on the expressway. Now that would be distracting. When the drive is too familiar. When you think this is nothing, and you're bored, and your mind wanders, and you start to think of something someone said to you, or something you should have said. Bam, 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 you know, and he's trying to change the station, and, and someone's always saying, hey, check out the babe, or great set of wheels, Brad, or is that a viper? His mom, whenever someone else drives, sits in the passenger seat and stomps on the brake pedal as if she had one. Yeah, well, I wish she'd give me a break. She always grabs a handle above the door. That's a real confidence builder. I don't know, it makes me nervous. Well, no offense, son, but you make us nervous. You're, you're so, uh... You know, and I'm like, a viper? You know, where? Where? Dad, if you only knew how careful I am. It's not that you can't drive. It's just you were so anxious to get your license. I passed the test. It's not about a test. It's about experience and the fact that, well, you don't have enough. Yeah, but I've got great reflexes. See, it's like he doesn't trust me. When I'm driving, I concentrate on driving. Completely. Really? You listen to the radio? Well, yeah, it keeps me alert. You know, focused. You ever open a can of soda while you're driving? When I need the caffeine. Show us how you open a can of soda while you're in the middle of driving. <laughs> okay, look. I trust you. I just know how dangerous it is out there. Well, I'm gonna have to find that out for myself. Okay, okay, so once, you know, once I had a, um, a fender bender. So if you're speeding and uh, no one is there, are you really breaking the law? Does it count as an accident if it wasn't your car? Now, this wasn't my fault. 
I hadn't even had my license for two weeks, and I'd never driven at night. But an emergency situation comes up, and I have to pick up my little brother at a friend's house. I don't know this town at all, and it's dark out. I never talk about it. A, a complete idiot is going, like, way too slow in the left-hand lane. You know, and I mean, there's laws about that, you know, even in the city. And I, I, I had just finished getting out of this, like, deep, solid traffic, you know, and I'm in no mood for this right now. And so I'm trying to pass this guy. Okay, it was on the right, but that's not the point, see? I, I, I could tell I'm getting this look from him, you know? It's, it's for sure this guy is looking directly at me. You know, I could see the gap closing real fast, and, and all I could think of is... I mean, no one ever sees it the way you see it. Like the other day, I'm approaching this curve, and I'm totally in control, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm not breaking any laws. Except I forgot about the laws of uh, physics. <laughs> so my friend started this food fight in my car. That made it really hard for me to drive. And then, then there was this creep on my tail who This came... is the first time that I'm hearing this. I was going way slow, and I could tell people were mad, but I had no choice. I was trying to read a map. I couldn't even find the street signs, let alone read them. I was freaking out, and I almost hit this car that was double parked. So I stopped just in time. Catch my breath, and I start to pull around it. But then this other car... And, and all I could think of was, you know, what's the best way to get past this guy who's boxing me in? So we're tooling down the road on the way to the game, and there was this, like, this road cone thing that sort of sprung up overnight out of nowhere. Please, <laughs> give me a break. Julie, Beth, I was there. Do you want to tell this story? Oh, is this OK? <laughs> she was going fast. But I was going fast. Really, really fast. So it happened really, really, you know. I thought I was in this kind of zone, you know? But it was only in my mind. Now, I don't know what it was in real time, but Things just started to, you know, boom. You know, he's, on, he's right on top of me. And it happened in like seconds. So I'm thinking, <laughs> you're going to love this. So I see the opening, you know, the window of opportunity. N nothing happened, luckily, but all I could think about were my parents saying, I told you so. <laughs> the outside world had other plans for me in the form of gravel. I was going so slow. It starts right off with people in your face asking you questions. You're looking through your wallet, your glove box. There's forms at the police station, the hospital, signing things. You're making calls. The cell phone is, of course, gone. Now I don't want to see or hear another phone. You can't believe what it's going to cost. There goes college. Now I need more money, so I fill out more forms so I get a second job. I'm taking the bus, which goes over great with the ladies, let me tell you. I know way more about insurance and liability and spinal cords than I ever wanted to know. The mail is now forwarded to my mom's house where I'm staying till whenever. Every day it's like, what's next? What's the new thing? Scott's doing. He's still recovering. It's been six months. He's forgiven me. Imagine that. I don't know, you know, I, I guess I've got to get a lot less aggressive. But that's why I'm so good at what I do. No one got hurt and there was no damage, but it was close and I'll never forget it. So finally, I pulled over and I yelled at them. Oh, do you like this? And I'm like, am I gonna have to turn this car around? <laughs> you know, like you. <laughs> but it works. If they know you mean it, it shuts them up. Well, 
when I get my license back. <laughs> I am not taking this one with me. <laughs> I've learned so much. And I think I understand what Dad's been telling me about driving. Next summer, I'm gonna ask Dad if I can drive cross country. When I sit behind the wheel and close the door, I know now that anything can happen. And you can start out thinking that you've got it all together, but you've got to realize what's going on out there and what's going on in here. Your eyes are moving from the road ahead to your mirrors, side to side, using your peripheral vision, listening. It's all happening at once. You've got to be aware of what's right in front of you, what's way out ahead of you, what's moving alongside, and it certainly doesn't hurt to know what's going on behind you. It's like experience, like the past. Don't dwell on it, but use it to help you out, to help you move forward. Okay, I'll tell you what happened. Is there time? Thank you.